body of work that I made over a 10 year period in Western China in a region called the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. And the work is mostly photographs made at holy sites for saints, Sufi saints. Um, and I focused on the markers that people created when they go on pilgrimage. what it was. Um, I was very moved by the physical handmade nature of the markers and for me I was in the desert and it was a very spiritual experience to see these markers. Um, they had so much life to them and although I didn't uh, know what I was looking at I thought I have a feeling this is deeply spiritual and um, I really wanted to learn more about it both uh, visually um, and in terms of what they were there for. The Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region has 11 million Uyghur people. They practice a form of Islam largely that is influenced by Sufism or is considered Sufism. And in the practice that they do in this region, there is saint veneration. So a lot of the holy sites are pilgrimage sites for saints. So there are uh, Muslim saints, and there are saints that might have been great poets, great um, proselytizers. They often were able to perform miracles during their lifetime, cure illness. It's believed that um, a saint never dies and they're in a state of eternal sleep. So a lot of the markers that you're looking at are for saints or for um, venerations close to the saint. There's very little knowledge about um, Xinjiang. So before I actually went there myself, um, I had never myself heard of the Uyghurs, and I hadn't known about the region. In fact, the Taklamakan Desert, which is huge, I had never heard of it. So I thought, um, well, that's, I'm not the only one. In fact, as I've made this work um, for a very long time, um, many people had never heard of the Uyghurs. So I think um, that in itself was really um, interesting and as I made the work and presented it to the public I realized a lot of what I was doing was presenting a different uh, perspective than the one that has reached uh, the West. I think the strength of this work is is the sort of magic, the sort of awe of what it is and, 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 and the discovery process of finding out what it is, what it's been used for, and the history related to that uh, practice. And what's so exciting about having SOAS was that it had a personal connection to Lisa. This was the, the place where she first met the, the Uyghur scholar in 2004, and in 2014 she came back to SOAS and, and, and did another conference here, and I think that that link to SOAS is, is really ideal. What was interesting to me was this idea that, that these things were intentionally placed, that they're, in a lot of the photos, they look like they're growing, they look like they're sprouting from the earth and, and they're alive, and, and that power of, of being alive relates so much to the spirituality, and for me that was really interesting and something that I felt needed to be sort of unpacked, and so for me, as a curator, I really wanted people to sort of be able to, to learn what these were and, and to sort of have an experience that's both a, a personal and spiritual experience, but also a, a bit of an educational experience 
because for, for what I think, a lot of people aren't familiar with this region and the kind of shrines that exist in the desert. The exhibition was shown at the Rubin Museum in New York. It was shown in France as part of the photography festival in Arles, overlapping with London and SOAS. The exhibition is going to be at a museum in Sweden called Fotografsika. I would love to see this exhibition travel to China. Uh, I think that many Han Chinese are very interested in learning more about the Uyghur, and um, I, I, think, I think it would be very well received. <laughs>